What if Pokemon and Fire Emblem had a samurai-themed kid? Well, then you're probably getting a game called Pokemon Conquest. We all know if there's one thing Nintendo likes to do, it's to milk that golden franchise. For every mainline Mario game, there's a Mario Party, Mario Striker, Paper Mario, Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix? But for Pokemon, it was pretty much the same for a while. Yeah, nowadays we may get something like Pokemon Snap or Pokemon Go, but when the DS was the biggest thing since canned beans, every generation we get a ton of games. New Mystery Dungeon, New Pokemon Ranger, Pokemon Dash, even Pokemon Fishing Rally. All of them bangers in their own right. But Pokemon Conquest stands out, and that's because of its unique old school Japanese setting. Not that one. But you're telling me I can enjoy the tactical turn-based combat of Fire Emblem with the simple nostalgia and charm of Pokemon? Well, I was all ears, so my stream and I sat down to play and see if the game was worth anything. We started as a nameless lord who just became the warlord of Aurora, one of the 17 kingdoms of the Ranse region, each of them styled after a different Pokemon type. And we get... Normal types. Yay. At least Eevee is cute. The point of this game is to conquer the whole region. And if we do, supposedly, a legendary Pokemon will come down to meet us. I really wonder which one it could be. But there's no time to worry about that, cause wow, the Fire Nation is attacking. They've decided to invade us with a whole one Tepig and one Bidoof. What monsters? Clearly Jigglypuff here is ready for war, that's the face of a stone cold killer. By the way, this is our companion, Weechi. <coughs> Oichi. <coughs> Oichi. She's a woman that appeared at our first battle and told us that no matter what she's gonna serve us and frankly she didn't take no for an answer. But it's okay, she doesn't have any relation to the main villain or anything. Well, now that the Fire Nation has been defeated, we can usher in a new age of peace and harmony for our nation, right? No more war, just time to relax. Unless three kids tell you that hey, these other two nations have no intention of fighting you, that makes them perfect to conquer. Well, if three children tell you to go to war, what choice do you have? It's got to be a good decision, right? Anyway, while I'm busy committing war atrocities, let's actually talk about the combat of this game. While I said this game is like Fire Emblem meets Pokemon, the combat is a bit more simplified. Every warrior you have controls one Pokemon at the field at a time, and each Pokemon only has one move. Instead of leveling up your Pokemon, the bond between a warrior and their Pokemon actually increases. And if you like a warrior or even their unique ability, it is possible to bond your warrior with a different wild Pokemon through a rhythm game. N not not that one, more like this. It's kind of fun to check out your castle each month to see what new warriors and Pokemon you can actually recruit, and frankly it's one of the best parts of this game. The actual combat of this game can range from amazingly easy to stupidly unfair. Fuck! And each map is a ton of fun in its own way and they all feel unique from each other. The Grass Nation challenged me to a game of essentially King of the Hill, the first one to capture and hold all three banners for a turn wins. You know, how all international conflicts should be settled. The Water Nation was actually just a straight up brawl, but there was a river separating the map that I had to turn off at first. Originally I thought it was unfair that the Water Nation made an arena that only their Pokemon could cross, until I remembered I was invading and pillaging their land. So you know what? That's fair! At one point, Oichi decided to fill us in on what's happening with the rest of the world. Based on the legend and meeting the legendary Pokemon, one warlord has been mercilessly taking over all the other kingdoms against their will, and she's counting on us to stop it. Even though we're doing the exact same thing. But they actually want to destroy the Ranse region using the power of the legendary Pokemon. And this man's name? Oda Nobunaga, you know, the real life historical samurai? Well, he's a Pokemon trainer now, and it's hilarious. This is essentially if Pokemon made a game set in America where Abraham Lincoln was trying to free the slaves through a Pokemon battle. It's nuts. Okay. Once we've taken over the grass and water nation, let's speed run a couple more nations. Electric Gym, shockingly easy. Bug Nation, crawled all over them. Fighting Nation, we punched them good. But that aside, we only have two more nations that Nobunaga hasn't taken over. The Ground and Psychic Nations. So, let's send our soldiers marching on, but what's this? The Ground Nation Warlord just straight up said no. No war today, and played a reverse Uno card. So we just turned around and left, and let their army march on us instead. <laughs> wow, I didn't know we could just say no to war. They should really keep that in mind. 
but after a tough battle, it's time we powered up. And that's when I made a huge discovery about this game. <laughs> we evolved too! For whatever reason in this game, humans also evolve like Pokemon. There's no real in-game explanation given, you just get a new set of clothes and your ability changes. It's hilarious and fun and I love it. Anyway, with our new outfit we managed to take over the ground nation and after seeing how bloodthirsty and vicious we are, the psychic nation also just gave up. Both of their lords agreed to join us, which was a huge power boost since they had a Gallade and a Rhyperior, so we were overpowered as all hell. But before we decided to continue our looting and pillaging, we decided to have a pre-war picnic before meeting with the big bad himself. He wants to take over the world and destroy the country, but we already knew that, so really it was just to introduce us to this handsome face. And I'm just gonna say it, I think I could fix him. Around this time we also managed to get a water stone and evolve our Eevee into a Vaporeon, which was another huge increase to our firepower. Of course, none of the remaining nations are weak against water, but I still thought it was the best choice. Now, we just have to take over all the nations controlled by Nobunaga. Rock, dark, poison, flying, all done. Fairly easy. Except for the dark nation, that was really close. I do want to gush about the art in this game, because every single sprite in this game, whether it's the pixel art for Pokemon, or the actual character sprites are gorgeous, and the character designs are all amazing. They're bursting with character and fun, and all the smile dialogues add a lot to the enjoyment of this game. Also, they're all really hot. I mean, they're all snacks in this game. Look at them. I mean, at least most of them. My favorite had to be the electric warlord Ginchio. Something about women in heavy armor just does it for me. And all these lords are also recruitable if you find them in a castle once you defeat them. Anyway, there were only a couple nations left, and I was feeling pretty good about our odds and the rate we'd been going. I, I don't feel the need to grind. So really, I think we're just gonna kick their ass first try. Ghost type, done. Steel types, done. Ice types, done. Ice types, done. All that was left was the final boss. Nobunaga's Kingdom of Dragnor. And I don't know why everyone keeps saying that Nobunaga is the closest, because we've got 16 out of 17 countries at this point, so I'm feeling pretty good that we're the favorite in this. Okay, well, we've defeated many foes. We've grown closer, all of our Pokemon together. We have great warlords, a great team. We'll be able to defeat these Dragon-type Pokemon. Or get freaking timed out, which I discovered if you run out of time, you just lose even if you have more Pokemon than your opponent. I mean, this is horseshit. Why does this count as a defeat? We would have won with two more turns and he's laughing like he's some genius. Also, why does he have a Zekrom? One of my six Pokemon is a Jigglypuff and he just has a full team of pseudo legendaries and Zekrom. Okay, okay, that's fine. But I mean, I would have won, so I'm sure we'll win again on the retry. So, I had to have a strategy. I need to get Rhyperior fucking up Zekrom as soon as possible. Darmanitane destroys the monkey, Vaporeon needs to get the good bite. And who would have guessed, in a turn-based strategy game, having a strategy actually means you win. And now, it was finally time to meet Arceus, or Arceus, or however you pronounce her name. It was pretty obvious this was a legendary Pokemon, right? And what do you know, Arceus just says it wants to be our Pokemon. I mean... All right, sure. Unfortunately, I suck at rhythm games, but eventually I got it down, and now I truly did have the power of God and anime on my side. And thank goodness I did, because Nobunaga decided it was time for round two. He's still gonna kick my ass, and now he brings along all of his favorite warlords and a shiny Rayquaza. This man feels like an eight-year-old playing their first Pokemon game who just stacked their team with legendaries and still can't beat the Elite Four. But... Anyways, I stomped them, because I mean, I have an Arceus. Nobunaga reveals the truth, he says that the legend was just that, a legend. Which it wasn't, we have the legendary Pokemon. But it caused people to fight so much that he wanted to conquer the world to destroy Arceus so that everyone would be at peace now. Which seems a little hypocritical, because you know, he was causing all the war and destruction, but he's hot enough that I think I'm gonna let it slide. Anyways. That was the conclusion of the main story for Pokemon Conquest. There were a lot of side stories you can do after the main story 
It lets you play as each of the different warlords and characters, and honestly, they some of them seem interesting, but some of them just didn't seem that great. Overall though, the game was a blast and a ton more fun than I actually thought it would be. The combat, while not super deep, was occasionally really difficult and fun. The variety in maps definitely carries the combat because each new gimmick changes the way you play, whether it's a sumo ring or rolling these boulders to hit other Pokemon or sliding on ice, which was way more difficult than it had any right being. But the other big highlight for me was definitely the characters. Recruiting them was probably the most fun I've had in a while. And playing as all the other lords were the only real thing tempting me to play the side missions. The only thing I would say that would be great to add would be some sort of social links or support conversations like you see in other games. Just so we can see these characters have more, well, character and screen time. I really like them. And while I don't intend to play more Pokemon Conquest on stream, I still had a ton of fun playing through with all of you. Be sure to catch my next ones. I'm going to be playing through some other Pokemon-like games or really whatever I'm feeling. Highly recommend you check the game out. You know where to emulate things. It's worth a playthrough. There's not really any other Pokemon game like it. And with all that being said, uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed yourself. And have a nice rest of y'all's day. See you soon.